Hey guys, what we're watching here is a Motorola 7 inch set, the VT71, which is actually the first vintage set that I ever restored. I'm just about to finish off another one, and I thought I would take some time tonight to uh, talk a little bit about this family of our early vintage sets. I'll turn on the lights so we can see a little bit better what, uh, what I've got laid out here. Okay, what I have laid out for you guys is five early Motorola sets. All from the same family of inexpensive electrostatic sets. By electrostatic, I mean they use picture tubes like the 7JP4 that do not use a yoke. A yoke is a couple electromagnets, big coils of copper wire that would sit on the neck here and deflect the electron beam as it comes out of this gun here and goes towards the face to sweep it uh, horizontally and vertically to paint out the picture. What these use instead is just a couple of metal plates. You can actually see two of them up in here. And then there's two more further down. So as the beam comes down, a voltage potential is applied across these two plates here and they move the beam back and forth. The reason they did this was to save money. These were the very first TVs to sell for less than $200. Further to save costs, they use a number of other interesting innovations. Uh, let's see, uh, no power transformer. What they did instead was take the AC input and feed it through a capacitor to isolate it from the uh, rest of the set and then feed it to a couple of selenium rectifiers and double it to make about 280 volts. That's what powers the, uh, the B plus on this set. Now as for the filaments, what they did is they wired them all in series kind of like uh, an old string of Christmas tree light bulbs so one tube burned out they all all the little tubes go out now there's a bit of a problem with that uh, to save money they reduce the tube count to the point where if you add up all these filament voltages 25 volts for this 25 L6 12 volts for a 12 SL7 6 volts for a 6AU6 and so on they ended up with two series strings each running around 90 volts or 80 volts thereabouts which is less than 117 coming in so they had to burn off 30 plus volts somehow and two choices they could use a couple of big power resistors or they could use what's called a ballast tube and that's what they went with uh, ballast tubes are, well they kind of look like vacuum tubes. Here's the one in this set. Uh, and there's, you can see that there's wire inside there which is uh, kind of like tungsten wire in a, in a uh, incandescent light bulb. It's got higher resistance than just a regular piece of copper wire. And all this thing does is just dissipate, <laughs> dissipate heat. Um, burn off the excess uh, voltage because they didn't have uh, enough tubes to uh, use it up and there weren't any tubes available like um, like a 35L6 or a, a 25L7 or, or so on to just to get the right combination of voltages so they just chose to burn it off with this guy. Sometimes these sets also come with a metal one which are notorious for burning out. The metal ones, it's a metal tube with the same type of wire on a mica frame but it's exposed to air. And what happens is, as those wires are hot, like in a toaster and exposed to air, eventually they oxidize. And if you power up an old set, they'll just pop and burn out. Like flipping on a light bulb when, it, when it's uh, reached the end of its life. These guys actually contain hydrogen gas inside. Uh, the hydrogen, because it's a really good thermal conductor, and because there's no oxygen, the wires don't oxidize. These last a long time. So if you can find any of these ballast tubes, I highly recommend them over the uh, uh, metal ballast tubes. Worst case scenario, uh, you could just build your own. Uh, plenty of guys have done that. Where you just take power resistors and build up maybe a little circuit board and take an old socket and you can pop one in. Um, the other really <laughs> odd thing about this is the tuner. Um, some of my other videos I may have seen tuners where it's a big, what they call a turret tuner, where there's a big drum that rotates and there's a, a, um, 
a little circuit module for each of the co for each of the channels or coils. Uh, and this, <laughs> that's what all these guys are for. There's one of these for each channel. But again, to save costs, the channel only has eight positions instead of uh, 12 for channels two through 13. So what you would do is get channels like this, 2-3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8-9, 10-11, 12-13. Apparently what you would do is when you would buy the set, the dealer would configure the set for you for the channels in your area. And you would act, this would actually already be set for channels 2 or 3 depending on which channel was used in your area. They, did, they knew they could get away with that because in most uh, areas, actually I think by law, by the FCC way back in the 40s, you couldn't transmit on both channels 2 and 3 in the same city because they would interfere with each other. And, uh, and that's controlled by just a conventional wafer rate position switch in here. So, eh, works well enough. A few other interesting innovations like for the video detector inside of this metal box here. They actually use a diode. I think it was the very first set to use a Germani germanium diode instead of a tube for the video detector. And uh, let's see, here's the socket with the picture tube would attach. And uh, it would slide into a cabinet like this, which was semi-inexpensive, but a pretty unique design, I think. This is the mahogany version, and this is the blonde. Now the blonde had a photo finish, but mine was really deteriorated, so what I did is I found some veneer that matched the rest of the cabinet as best I could and uh, glued it on. So I guess you could call it a bit of an upgrade. <laughs> a photo finish is where the wood grain is actually kind of painted or like wallpaper sort of, instead of actual veneer. And this would be the Bakelite version. And this is also a Bakelite version, but this is the high-end version. This is the 8-inch pitcher tube, which uses an 8BP4. Also kind of a cool-looking set, but uh, they sold far fewer of these, and these pitcher tubes are quite hard to come by. I've already removed mine and put it in storage, but it is good, so I will get this set running one of these days. Now, uh, arguably the most interesting of all these sets is what's in here, which is the suitcase set. Uh, so yeah, this was meant to uh, be lugged around. Uh, if you want to go traveling and have a TV with you, you'd take this. So what's actually in here is... Another Motorola set. When you operate this, you would angle it down and uh, yeah, watch it <laughs> while it's all outlined on its uh, bottom there. Uh, but same basic circuitry inside. A 7 inch uh, picture tube. There are a number of styles of this. Um, it's also a blind and there are some variations that have a rectangular cutout, which is this is more akin to a porthole, I think. Unfortunately, I'm missing the antenna. Normally, there would be an antenna kit that would slide in here and into here and snap on to this uh, knob and thing here. But, oh well, maybe someday I'll find one. The other thing I really like about these sets is... Uh, well, <laughs> it just so happens that all the sets I got were really basket cases. Uh, I did not record any video when I got these because I didn't have a camera yet, but uh, here are some still frames to uh, close out this video. And uh, I think you can see <laughs> some of the uh, the pains I had to go through to get these sets uh, looking like they do now. <laughs>